are listening to the Art of Homeschooling podcast, where we help parents cultivate creativity and connection at home. I'm your host, Jean Miller, and here on this podcast, you'll find stories and inspiration to bring you the confidence you need to make homeschooling work for your family. Let's begin. Well, hey there, my friend, and thanks so much for listening in. Today, I want to talk about mindset, because how we think and what we believe about the world affects what we think, how we feel, how we act, and react. Mindset is a huge part of our daily lives. Translated, this simply means that We all want to feel better about our homeschooling and what we're doing with our children. And the way to do that is by focusing on our mindset. So I heard this statement recently uh, on a podcast, I think it was about decluttering. And uh, the quote is, experts agree that success is 10% knowledge 10% community, and 80% mindset and habits. Mindset really does matter. It can affect the way we think about everything. And for it to be 80% of our success, that's pretty remarkable. This is the key to us feeling better about the work we've chosen to do in the world. That's why today I want to share with you four ways to lighten your homeschooling mindset to relieve some of that heavy heavy burden of responsibility that we sometimes feel as homeschoolers and as parents. These are lessons I've learned in my parenting and homeschooling journey of uh, over 30 years. (laughs) Uh, My oldest child turns 31 this week. That's crazy. And so I've been doing a lot of reflecting recently on how everyone in my family, three kids and two adults, have all grown through the years. So here we go. Four ways to lighten your homeschooling mindset. First way, let go of harmony addiction. This is me for sure. And oh my goodness. Have uh, have you ever heard of harmony addiction? I think it's a fascinating phrase, and I'll tell you why. I grew up in a family with a lot of unspoken anger, even you could even call it rage, unspoken rage. And my perceived job from a very early age was to maintain the harmony, to keep it all from falling apart. Fast forward to parenting and homeschooling, I felt overly responsible for everyone else's behavior and everyone's feelings, and it wore me out. Add Waldorf to the mix with its beautiful colors and natural playthings, paintings and drawings in handmade lesson books. So many of us who are drawn to this approach find that we want life to all be these lovely colors and beautiful beeswax creations at every moment. But the truth is, life is life, and we're only human. Conflict will happen. (laughs) Or as my friend Sheila says, there will be yelling. (laughs) Really, 50% will be beautiful and harmonious, and 50% will be challenging because that's life, 50-50. So the sooner we can get, let go really of our addiction harmony, the sooner our homeschooling mindset will lighten up. We are not responsible for trying to keep everyone happy all of the time. That is the truth of it. All right, the second way we can lighten our homeschooling mindset is to welcome 
the unwelcome. Love it all. James Joyce said in Ulysses, mistakes can be portals of discovery. So turn toward, right? Turn toward rather than away. Welcome it all. When I first heard this concept, I was surprised at how hard it was for me to embrace. So I wrote this down on a post-it note. I wrote, mistakes are opportunities for learning. I had to read that post-it note many, many times to begin to be able to take that in, to let it sink in. And still today, I bristle sometimes when I hear this idea because I just want to prove it wrong. As a parent, I wanted to be the one who made no mistakes. I wanted to be the mom whose homeschool was so well-planned that the children smiled all the time. Remember that concept of harmony addiction? And when they didn't, I felt that I had failed. And it sometimes kept me really stuck. It kept me from even being willing to try new things sometimes for fear of the unwelcomed response. Until... I was able to realize that experimenting was good. And experimenting means we don't know the outcome. We try something new and we see how it goes. And then we learn from that experience so that we can try the next thing. What a concept. Here's a little secret. No one has all the answers. And no one knows your child or children better than you do. And part of deciding to homeschool is deciding to welcome it all, to welcome the seemingly unwelcome bits along the way with, along with everything else. Homeschooling is really a long game and you have years. So I want to give you permission right here and right now to try some things and see how they go. I give you permission to not know the outcome, permission to make mistakes. Ah, uh, I feel lighter already because I need this reminder too, probably almost on a daily basis. All right. On to the third way to help lighten your homeschooling mindset. And here it is. Accept all emotions. The only way around is through. That's what I often say. And it really starts with acceptance. When you feel like a failure, try thinking this instead. Try saying to yourself, this is really painful but that doesn't mean I've done anything wrong. When homeschooling isn't working, that doesn't always mean that we're doing it wrong. But here's the catch 22. If we decide that that's what it means, we'll stop abruptly in our tracks and never move forward. Because when we try to avoid feeling frustrated or sad, or less than, or even lonely, we'll never get past those feelings. And sometimes the harder we try, the more we stay stuck. Here's an example. When my kids would whine and complain about the lessons, you know, the mom, do I have to do this? Or I'm so tired, or this is so boring, you know. So my first response would be to try to make everything more fun, to talk them out of their malaise, to encourage and cheer them on. And that kept me from realizing that some days are just like that. And it's okay for me to sometimes say, yeah, I get it. And now it's time to finish the lesson. And just keep going, right? Just keep moving forward. This one takes really retraining our brains, I think. This is a hard mindset uh, shift to make. But 
it's not hard once we recognize it. We just need to be willing to declare that we can accept all emotions. And when negative ones come up, to recognize that those are a part of life just like, or really just as much as the positive emotions. All right, on to our fourth and final way to lighten your homeschooling mindset. Love yourself because you matter. The work you're doing in this world matters and you are enough. You have all you need to parent and to homeschool your children. And if that's something that's hard for you, I encourage you to have a look at that, a closer look. For many of us, our not enoughness comes from the way we were raised, from our families of origin, plus messages from the dominant culture, plus our personality. But whatever it is, if you're having trouble loving yourself, I really encourage you to find a community or a coach who can help you uncover why and begin to turn that around. Even a close friend to be able to talk these things through with. It will make all the difference in your life for yourself and for your children to get support in this area. For me, this really took years, but the start was to give myself permission to really become myself, right? To be my my quirky, you know, goofy, funny, sometimes uh, challenging <laughs> self. And uh, it really, I had to to step into that in a loving way, right? To be able to become who I'm really meant to be and not someone that uh, someone else wished that I would be. Practice a little bit every day and you'll get there. I know it. So how is your homeschooling mindset going right now? Do you feel, do you feel lighter after listening to this? I sure hope so. This is actually one of my favorite things to talk about and to help homeschoolers with. So often people will uh, ask me what I do, and I'll say, I coach homeschooling moms who want to bring their lessons to life with hands-on creative activities. But what I really do is help homeschooling moms feel like they're enough. That's right, because when we feel like we're enough, like we can, then we can let go of harmony addiction. We can welcome the unwelcome. We can accept all emotions and love ourselves. And when we're able to do that, we can be better parents and be more present for homeschooling our children. It's possible. We can feel better about ourselves and our homeschooling. Are you interested in exploring any of these ideas further? I would love to invite you to join me and a wonderful group of homeschooling uh, moms inside the inner work journey. Once a year, I lead a group of homeschooling moms on a 12-week online journey toward acceptance and possibility. If you struggle with feeling behind, feeling like you never do enough or teach enough or bring enough or finish enough or sometimes even wonder if you are enough. If you sometimes feel like you're the number one element that stands in the way of a happy homeschool life and you're ready to step into the light and guide your family the way you know you can, then I encourage you to check out all the details of the inner work journey at artofhomeschooling.com slash inner work journey. The journey begins the first week in March. I do this every spring starting in March, and we're about to uh, begin the inner work journey 2021. So go check out all those details. And in closing, I want to remind you this. When we feel like we're enough, 
We can let go of harmony addiction, welcome the unwelcome, accept all emotions, and love ourselves. And then we can be better parents and be more present in the moment for both ourselves and our children. That's all for today, my friend. But here's what I want you to remember. Rather than perfection, let's focus on connection. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Art of Homeschooling podcast. 